Modifieds. The most powerful cars racing under NASCAR sanction. From March until October, on racetracks from North Carolina to Maine, these 600 horsepower open-wheeled machines do battle at weekly racetracks and on the NASCAR Winston Modified Championship Tour, determining the NASCAR Modified Champion. Over the past decade, one man ruled the NASCAR Modified ranks as no one has ever ruled any other form of stock car racing. Nine times he won the NASCAR Modified Championship. More championships than have been won by any driver in any other form of NASCAR racing. This year, the National Motorsports Hall of Fame is proud to induct the late Richie Evans, the first driver to ever enter the Hall of Fame from outside the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. In 1941, Richie Evans was born in Westonville, New York, just outside the city of Rome that he would later make famous. At the age of 16, he left his family's farm with the hopes of becoming a mechanic. He was a mechanic at a gas station when he began racing dragsters on area tracks. But he turned to ovals in 1962, when former Winston Cup driver Chuck Mahoney talked him into building a hobby car for the then brand new Utica Rome Speedway in Vernon, New York. Evans started in a partnership with Joe Jones who owned the gas station Evans worked at. But Evans eventually took over the whole operation. In 1965, he began racing modifieds. For the next seven years, Evans raced modifieds with a variety of sponsorships, always running well, but never dominant. However, late in the 1972 season, he made the initial moves to begin a relationship that would change modified racing. Gene DeWitt, head of the B.R. DeWitt concrete firm and seven other large corporations in upstate New York, had been involved in modified racing for many years as sponsor of the legendary Dutch Hogue. When Hogue retired, a variety of drivers tried their hands at his cars, but were unsuccessful. However, at Trenton, New Jersey in 1972, Evans jokingly suggested to one of DeWitt's mechanics that he should be given a chance to drive DeWitt's car in the Permatex 300 at Daytona the next year. Unknown to Evans, though, DeWitt took the suggestion seriously. Evans drove for DeWitt at Daytona. Then a partnership began. With the addition of Billy Nasowitz, who was to become Evans' right-hand man for the rest of his career, the DeWitt team won the 1973 NASCAR Modified Championship. In winning the 1973 title, Evans beat out fellow Rome resident Jerry Cook, who had won the championship the previous two seasons. For the next seven years, the two would decide the modified title between them, with Cook winning his share and Evans winning. In those days, the modified title was decided by drivers running as many races as they could, sometimes as many as 90 in a season. There were also some little tricks involved. As Cook explains, We both lived in the same town, which made it a lot easier to kind of watch over each other, so to speak. I know there was times, and I mean, we'd had people calling each other to see where each other was going people driving by the houses to check which way he was going. I can remember when we went out of town going one way, circled around town and went back another way. There was one time when uh, we left all the trucks sitting outside and I know my wife had uh, gone to Fonda to the races that night, which is where, which is where Richie went, just to watch the races. And uh, it got down there and Richie's mechanic, Billy, asked Sue where I was and she looked at her watch and said that, well, right about now he's time trialing in Hickory, North Carolina. I had flown down to Hickory that night to run a race that counted towards the points and got one in on him. But, uh, it, it went like that. I mean, I'd done it and won it quite a few times, and then he came along, and of course, being living so close together, he learned what it took to do it quite a bit quicker than somebody else that had never done it before. Jerry Cook won the last of his six championships in 1977 then finished second to Evans the next three years. Cook retired from racing after the 82 season to become NASCAR modified director. In 1978, Evans began his string of eight consecutive titles.
during his championship season of 1981, Evans was one half of what many believe to be the most exciting finish in the history of racing. On the final lap of the modified portion of the Miller 500 Classic at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, Evans was trying to pass leader Jeff Bodine when the two tangled coming off the fourth turn. After crashing together, the two cars spun wildly, with Evans' orange number 61 turning up on its side before crossing the finish line. Evans' wrecked car was towed to victory lane, where he received the winner's trophy. Jerry Cook was near the two on the track and remembers the finish. That was a, that was a very, probably one of the most exciting races that Martinsville ever had was the, the finish with Richie and Jeff crashing and banging on the last lap. Because we just had a caution right near the end of that race with just a few laps to go and I was involved in that and had broken an axle housing. But with only, well it was three, four laps to go is all there was till the end of the race. I was the last car, there was four cars in the lead lap and I was one of them and the, when it all started to happen they were yelling to me on the radio and I couldn't really tell what was going on until I came off the fourth turn and all I said to myself was, I, it, darn it all, they both made it over the finish line. Because <laughs> I still had a good shot at winning it even though it was broken down but when they both made it over the line it all just finished the way it was. Martinsville Speedway Public Relations Director Dick Thompson has seen a lot of exciting finishes, but ranks this one as the best ever. Well, really, I think it had to be the, the greatest finish of any race held at any racetrack. Uh, you have Richie Evans and Jeff O'Dowd running side by side most of the day, and they got onto the last lap, and they were coming off turn four, and everybody in the grandstand was up, everybody in the press box was up. The checkered flag was out, ready to wave, and then they got together, and they started slipping and sliding and Richie went up on the wall literally and his car was at such an angle that the people from the infield could read the car number on top of the car everyone's up cheering everybody was just really almost in shock and I know a, a thought flashed through my mind I thought uh oh I could see the headlines the next day car and grandstand at Martinsville Speedway but Richie bounced off the wall he lost a front tire and literally bounced across the finish line to win on three wheels Jeff hit the inside wall, and I had another thought through my mind. Two drivers injured at Martinsville. But then I watched them climb out of the car, and I knew they were both all right. I started to relax, and I looked in the pits, and a, just a real sea of people came rolling out on the racetrack. There was another flash in my mind, right at Martinsville. But the boss was down there, Clay Earls, and he had some deputies. <clears throat> and he was taking the trophies down there, and they, they went rolling in, and he got things quieted down real quick. So they brought Richie and Jeff up to the press box and we put Richie in one end and we put Jeff in the other and they did the interviews. It was a touchy moment, of course, and, uh, but just a great finish. And, and six months later, the professionals that they are, I had both of them posing for a cover program for our, fall, our next year's program. And, but I, I really think what I remember most about that finish was that, that Richie, when I asked him about it later, he said, you know, when I got up on the wall and all the way down through there, he said, I never let off the gas. And to me, that, that was really Richie Evans. While there is no question that Evans was a superior racer, he was also an extremely popular one. Nine times the membership of NASCAR voted him the most popular driver in the modified division. He was always willing to help younger drivers, and his sense of humor made him popular not only with other drivers, but with the media and the fans. Now, really, Richie Evans, if there's a, a feeling I have about him, was that, that he was actually born too late. Uh, Richie should have raced many years earlier with, with Curtis Turner and Joe Weatherly. Uh, all three of them really were drivers that, that were larger than life. They had a, a capacity for life that they seemed to enjoy themselves anything they were doing or anywhere they were. They were very funny. They liked to have a good time and you'd go up to Richie and he'd, he'd smile that little grin at you and, and you knew he was up to something that could have been anything, a joke or or maybe his car was running real, real well and he knew he was going to win, but they all partied hard, they had a good time, but when, when it, come to, it came time to race, 
and that big orange 61 rolled out on the track, you know that Richie was the man to beat. And I guess really, when you think about Richie, there were so many thousands of people that, that really loved him and respected him and admired him. And, and, and that's a really a, a great thing to leave behind you. And Richie, uh, Richie should have run earlier, but we were fortunate enough to have him in our own time. And it's not a bad way to be remembered. Evans' mechanical ability was well known. He and Nasowitz designed and built their own cars from the ground up and also built cars for sale. Today, Nasowitz is operating a successful car building shop. Evans once talked about his racing team. There's no man working at my garage an hour that I'm not there working with him, so I think that makes the guys work better and uh, I just don't pop in the garage and say, why the heck didn't you do this or that, you know? And I think they feel that if I'm that committed, they should be that committed and I think it makes everything work better. I'm ready for the snow to come and then I know this car can't race anymore. What Richie Evans did the best was win races. From 1978 through 1983, he won 206 races, capturing an incredible 52 checkered flags in the 1979 season alone. The wins came at weekly NASCAR tracks in the Northeast, such as Spencer, Thompson, Shangri-La, Riverside Park, New Egypt, Riverhead, Islip, and Stafford. But they also came in all of the traditional big events for modified. Evans won the richest NASCAR modified race, the race of champions, three times and on three different tracks. He took a win on the famous Trenton track, then a victory on the super speedway at Pocono and the three quarter mile track at Pocono. He won the longest modified race, the Winston 300 at Thompson, Connecticut, and he won the famous Spring Sizzler at Stafford three times. He took 10 checkered flags at Martinsville and also showed the world that he could have been a successful Winston Cup driver if he had wanted to when he won back-to-back -back modified races on the high banks of Daytona. He won four Winston Racing Series Northeast Region titles. His last victory came on the tiny Oxford Plains Speedway in Maine on September 22nd, and he finished sixth in what was his last race, the World Series at Thompson only five days before his death. In his last season, Evans won 12 of the 28 races in the series that determined the NASCAR modified title. At the awards banquets following the 1985 season, Evans' wife, Lynn, and their two children, along with Nazowitz and DeWitt, were on hand to represent Evans and accept his awards. He had already clinched his ninth title when he died in a practice accident at Martinsville Speedway on October 24, 1985, while preparing for the final race of the season.